Well, welcome everyone. So delighted that you chose to join me on my podcast today. I have such an exciting, vibrant, creative, brilliant woman, Leslie Monsell. And I want to share a little bit about her before we, Monsell, before we get into it. So her tagline is made by a woman, made by a woman for all women. Leslie is Beauty for Real's founder. Leslie Munsell is a world-renowned makeup maverick, innovator, pioneer, and all-around girl boss in working with so many unique women from all walks of life. She has a front row seat to what women really need. These women wanted to be heard. Leslie listened. One thing struck a chord. Women were overwhelmed by a massive selection of makeup in the market. This is what inspired her to create Beauty For Real, a brand that fills the gap through expertly curating high-performance beauty essentials that get the job done. With over 25 years of experience as an editorial makeup artist, Leslie's impressive career spans from working with the biggest names in the ad and fashion industry. Patrick DeMarchelaire, Tom Monroe, Giorgio Armani, and Roberto Cavallari, Cavalli, to name a few, and contributing to publications such as W Magazine, Allure, Harper's Bazaar, InStyle, and Oprah. Beauty for Real is a carefully chosen product selection of high-performing items that women can use every day to easily and effortlessly look their best. Leslie says, it's the ultimate in beauty for the active woman on the go and in the know. Beauty for Real is Leslie's passion project. From formula to product packaging, she is dil diligently on duty, mark making sure that every little detail is purpose-driven and perfected to a T. A fierce advocate for everyday beauty, you can find her empowering women and making the world a prettier place. Leslie, welcome to Mornings with Michelle. So happy you're here. You know what? I am thrilled to be here, Michelle. I am so excited because meeting you was just such a delight. And I would love to talk more with you every day if I could. <laughs> oh, you're so kind, Leslie. And Leslie and I met through a collaboration that we do in the beauty world. And from there, I asked her to help me with my makeup. But Leslie, before we go into the now, I really love to go back in time. Okay. So if you would play with me, and I would love to ask you, when you were a little girl, five years old, what did you dream about? What did you dream about doing when you grew up? You know, it. I, I, I think about this oftentimes because, you know, I've had a really amazing and fun and wonderful career that I love so much. And when I was a little girl, you know, I grew up in a very agricultural place in Minnesota. Um, on a farm, like a, a real farm, not a fancy farm, um, <laughs> a real farm that, you know, in a very agricultural community, 500 people in our little town, 27 in my graduating high school class. Wow. So we were a little bit, I don't want to say isolated, but yeah, kind of. And, you know, I'm 63 year old, years old. So back in the day when I was a kid, of course we had TV and, you know, I went to a regular school and all that, I, you know, it's not like I lived up in the tundra or something, but, um, but it's not like it is now, you know, where there's so much exposure to so much, no matter where you live, you know, the internet didn't exist. There was no social media. So, um, but I remember really always loving makeup from the very beginning, you know, watching my mom getting ready. And it sounds so cliche because everybody says this, but it's true. I do have these memories of her, getting ready to go out, you know, on Saturday night and, you know, putting her makeup on and um, just being fascinated by that whole process of, of what, you know, what she was doing. Um, so I knew I always loved it, but I didn't really know until years later that you could have a career as a professional makeup artist. You know, mm. back when I was in high school, um, I, I didn't know. And then I went to college and got a degree in business and economics. And, you know, my first job was working in retail, managing stores and doing that. But I was always drawn, even when I was in college, you know, the library was right across the street from the beauty salon that was the coolest one in town. And I had friends who worked there. So that's where I went instead of going to the library, you know, I was I always it. hanging in the salon. And then um, 
when I was graduated college and started working, uh, I had a boyfriend who had a, a big salon in, I was living in, in, in near Houston and, um, you know, he was associated with a modeling agency. Well, that was it. You know, that was the big kickoff for me was doing, you know, getting these girls ready and teaching classes for them and working in the salon, doing, you know, access to clients who I would touch up. And I always, you know, I worked at the counter in college, but I didn't really understand what it meant to have a career as a pay professional makeup artist until, you know, that point when I saw, oh, you get an agent and you, you know, work in advertising or on magazines or, you know, fashion shows and all of that, that came to me much later, but I always loved makeup. Always. I love it. I love it. This is fascinating. So let me ask you this. How did you get the support of others? So you were in Houston, you were had opportunity, but how did you get the support of others being from the business economics side of degrees? Yeah, well, um, it's interesting because I think that when you kind of have an entrepreneurial sort of spirit mm -hmm. that you... I don't know if you see things differently, you approach things differently. Things are just a little bit different because, you know, I grew up on a farm. I always had horses too, which is my other, my second passion is just I'm still horse crazy. And I would ride my horse to the neighbors to sell them greeting cards and seeds for their garden and stuff like that. And it was always so exciting for me when I would sell something. It was like, oh my God, it was so great, you know? So even when I was working, you know, for now 30 years as a professional makeup artists and have had such an amazing opportunity to meet, you know, people who are at the top of their game in every, you know, field, whether it's actors and singers and um, sports people, you know, athletes or chefs or, you know, whatever it is, um, I am introduced to these people who are just so fascinating and wonderful and at the top of their game, which, you know, I think you attract that. And I think that I, I have attracted that, which is great. Um, and I'm super grateful for it every, every day, but there was, I, in addition to doing that, I always had a partnership in a salon. Um, even though I'm not really a hairstylist, it was the business part of it that was really exciting to me. So I think I got that from my family, from my, my dad, you know, he, he, he always said, I'm not a farmer. I mean, they, we had agriculture and we had crop, they grew crops and he had, guys who did that for him because he was in the cattle business. He was buying and trading and selling and growing, you know, in the, in the, in the beef, you know, making, making a uh, feed lots and, you know, did all that. And I think that, you know, he was always working on a deal and talking to the, all his friends and, you know, doing this and doing that. And that's what really excited him. And I think that that was what sort of ignited it in me probably. And I always had that support from them to, you know, think independently. And, and um, I don't guess I, I mean, I had, I had jobs and, and things when I first started out, but I haven't had like a real paid salary job ever in my adult life. Wow. Just not the way that I guess I was brought up. And there you go. <laughs> there you go. So Leslie, we all have one big strength. I mean, and I'm sure you have so many, it's obvious, but just tell me what you believe your biggest strength is. Um, well, I guess it could go, you know, quite deep, like where, where all this came from. But when I, when I work, um, and now that I have, you know, Beauty for Real as a brand, I don't do as much uh, makeup artistry. I don't have an agent anymore because I'm not really available like that anymore. But when I do, and I do work with people that I've worked with for, you know, decades, photographers, certain celebrity clients, things like that, you know, the photographers say that it's one thing, you know, to technically be able to do the work, you know, technically have the skills to be a makeup artist, which I can talk about that too. But, you know, one of the things that they say is I want you to be there because, you're great with the client. Like if it's an advertising job, you're great with the client. But what happens is, is that when the talent, whether it's a model or an actress or an athlete or whatever, gets to the set, they are so relaxed and they're so comfortable and they're so confident in the way that they look that it makes their jobs 10 times easier. Wow. So I think that that is, you know, one of the skills that I, that I have. And 
um, you know, and as far as the technical part goes of being a makeup artist, there's, you know, there are a lot of people who can do amazingly brilliant, amazing faces that are very creative, um, that are almost like special effects kind of things. But can you make someone look pretty? Mm. You know what I mean? And I yes. think that most women, most of us, and I think another thing, Michelle, that, that I, 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 you know, you could maybe attest to is that you've really got to be able to figure out what a person's lifestyle is like, what they are going to be comfortable doing on a daily basis, or, you know, whether it's daily or for a special occasion or whatever, you know, you have to be able to look at someone and kind of read them and say, you know, you've been, I'm sure to the counter as do most of the, you know, women who have ever gone to a makeup counter, oftentimes you go home and take it off because it's just not you. Right. It's I don't even fun. get home. I go to the restroom at Nordstrom's and pull it. It's horrific. Yeah. I look like a clown. I've done it three or four times and gave up. Yeah. So I think that that's also a skill is to sort of really be open to reading people and understanding what they're going to feel comfortable with, how to make them feel and look like their best version of themselves. I love that. I love that because no matter how much makeup and, and, and talent, you know, when you can bring out the essence of some, someone feeling beautiful, yeah, that's the A plus, right? That's the it factor. Yeah. Because, you know, you can take the most beautiful girl in the world and, you know, if she doesn't believe she's beautiful, then what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that, Leslie. Right. Do you run into that a lot when you first start with them? I mean, do you, is your work cut out for you sometimes? Yeah, I mean, oftentimes, but I think, I think that if you, I guess that's part of, part of the, the skill, if you really can kind of open up and is it making yourself vulnerable? I'm not really sure to help someone feel relaxed and feel, you know, mm -hmm. help them really feel like that they they don't have to put on pretension or airs or act like there's something that they're not, you know, you are who you are. And, and that's beautiful too. Everyone, you know, we all have, we all have great things that we can feature and focus on to make us look and feel great. Right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And to make that your, your, your biggest strength. Um, that's extraordinary. And we love extraordinary here. We love extraordinary. You know so, what? I have to say, it's like the, sorry to interrupt you, but it's it's really why I do have done what I've done is, and and it's great to make anyone feel great, but you know, beautiful models or, or celebrities who are paid to be beautiful, it's always exciting, right? But I think to take, you know, women who maybe who've never felt like they look great or, or they maybe were up you know, they remember themselves as this pretty version of themselves when they were younger. And now they're, you know, more mature, 50s plus 60s, 70s, whatever age, and all of a sudden things change and you don't feel good anymore. And to be able to really work with someone and show them and help them feel great and look in the mirror and go, oh my gosh, this, I look great, is so gratifying and such a wonderful thing. There aren't too many careers where you can actually make someone feel like that. Right, right. It's a beautiful thing. It's yeah. an absolutely beautiful thing. Leslie, you've had a huge success, huge success. I want to ask you about how have you dealt with the failures? Like, can you think of a time when you had a failure? And can you give the audience kind of a, maybe a, this is how I get th got through it kind of a thing? Yeah, you know, I think about, you know, some of the, you know, not everything goes perfectly, believe me. <laughs> You know, and I think you just have to kind of now it's like you know, some of the things that went wrong, you know, like, for example, there was a time when we were really working hard to put Beauty for Real into Barney's in New York. Mm. Actually, we were we were working on another brand that was just my name was just Leslie Monsello. And we, you know, had met with the beauty buyer twice and she was really into it. And I had a team of people that I was going in with and presenting and. I don't know if you've, you probably, you were in Chicago and you've been, here's, you know, you've been around the world, so you're exposed. You probably had been in Barney's, which was the most incredible store. It was absolutely 
oh, so cool, so creative, you know, really super high end, but kind of not in the snooty Bergdorf sort of way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for me, that was like the pinnacle of, you know, wow, this is really, really exciting for me. Right. Um, and then what happened was, is that, you know, they're out of business now and have been for a couple of years, unfortunately, but um, they had brought in a new overall buyer and, you know, she looked at it and while the beauty buyer was into it, you know, they were starting to make cutbacks because they were having financial, you know, whatever happened, it got X and it was devastating because I'd been working on it literally for like 18 months. Wow you know, it, it, they decided not to, to pick it up. Well, at the time I was crushed, but looking at it now, it's like, that would have been a disaster. Mm. But invested all this money in inventory and promotion and Mark, you know, with the whole thing. And it, it they went out of business. And uh, so I think that sometimes when things don't work out the way that you would have liked to have have them work out you kind of have to look and say well now that I'm 63 I maybe know a little bit better that that's not the way it was that's not the way it's supposed to go and there's going to be something else that will present itself and you've got to be open to receiving whatever that presentation is going to be and if you're sitting there all bummed out and depressed and you know down in the dumps because that didn't work out are you going to be able to receive what was meant to work out does that Mm -hmm. make sense It makes total sense. It makes absolutely total sense. So that was really a great lesson for me. Um, A painful one for sure. You know, lots of money and time and energy uh, expended, but it wasn't meant to be for an obvious reason. So, yeah. So I think that's kind of the way to look at it, even on little things, you know, it's like, whatever, you have a flat tire. Well, okay, (laughs) carry on. Right. you know I always think about you know what's the worst thing that can happen and that hasn't happened yet so yeah I love it I love it so let me ask you this what's your big hairy audacious goal your Baja what is it well you know what this is one of those things where um I think about like where I was even a few years ago and sort of the goals that I wanted to have and where I am now. And it's kind of, you know, it's not all happening. It's not all coming together yet, but it's all kind of headed in that direction. And a lot of it has happened. So my, um, my life is, is, you know, really fantastic. What I would like to do is I want to build beauty for real into a much bigger brand. I want to have a lot of, you know, opportunity to, to expose it to the marketplace, to women, um, to show them, you know, that it doesn't have to be complicated. You're you, Michelle, are the perfect, perfect example of, I think something that we, you know, have to offer to, to women, to the marketplace is, you know, this idea that, that beauty can be easy and, you know, high performance products that last that you don't have to think about, you put it on, you're done and it shouldn't be complicated and confusing. There are a few things that you can, that you learn to do and that like, you know, when we talked about it, you were like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. I mean, I never really thought about it before, but now that I think about it, it's so logical. Why didn't I think of that? But, you know, absolutely, you know, things like that. And I think that I can definitely help a lot of people. Um, So that's really sort of what my big audacious goal is now specifically how it's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And, you know, I don't necessarily have the answer to that, but when, I have the opportunity to meet people and to share the information. I think that's the most important part. So here's a platform and you and I chatted about this um, because I am that person, right? I've never been a big makeup person. When people tried to share it with me, um, they didn't listen to who I was or what I wanted and um, it didn't work. And yet I was seeking. And I just remember when you helped me It was just so much fun. And I'm so excited. Like, I've never said this in my life. I'm so excited about my makeup coming. Like, I can't wait. I'm so So, excited too. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I want to really make sure this is the before, right? This is the before. And 
I've done the best I can, but I realize now, even putting my makeup on this morning with stuff that is okay, I realize, oh, that, you just wait. I was talking to myself in the mirror and it, <laughs> it just lit me up to think, you know, oh my gosh, because we all want to feel that extra bit of like you, your attention, your, um, your knowledge, but your heart, Leslie, was so into it. And, um, you know, you literally just took the time, you showed up with no makeup and we went one step at a time because it's always great to see the before and the after, right? We're very visual people. Yep. But I really want to zone in on something that I agree with you because one of the things that made me purchase the product I did was they said it was for women over 50. And I went, what? Yeah. What? Like actually someone noticed women over 50. What? Will you kind of go into your philosophy about that? Yeah. Well, it kind of, I guess that also it's, it's a little bit, maybe a, two or three parts as to how it happened and why it happened. But you know, I've been doing makeup for like we have talked about for 30 plus years. I'm 63 years old. So I worked a lot for a long time with different cosmetic brands, promoting, doing education, working on product development. And then about 11 years ago, I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just put my toe in the water and do my own thing for, you know, a little bit. Why not? Let's try it. You, how hard can it be? Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so I, you know, I started with some lip products and then one thing led to another. And, um, you know, I was really making it for myself. A lot of the formulations, I, you know, they're all custom formulated. So I'd go into the lab and I'd start working on product. And, you know, for me and for my friends who, you know, were my age and I was still working, uh, doing models and actresses, whatever. So some women who are younger, but you know, it had to work for me. It had to work for my friends who are my age. And that's who I was really testing most of it and trying most of it on. Well, now that, you know, I remember when I was younger, like, let's say I was, you know, 35 and I was working and would work with women who were not pro beauties and they would come in and let's say older women doing, a, let's say a, 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 a wedding. So the mother of the bride kind of thing. And she'd come in and you know, she's like, oh, can you, can you make my wrinkles go away? Or can you, know, kind of kidding around and yeah, get rid of these bags, that kind of thing. And I remember my mind going, well, you know, if you'd quit thinking about it so much, it wouldn't, or, you know, <laughs> fussing about it, it wouldn't be such a big deal. I think, you know, now that I'm there, it's a little bit different, but, <laughs> um, you know, I guess it's a cultural thing that we've had for the beginning of time when we were drugged by the hair into a cave, you know, that women were serving a purpose, which was, you know, for reproduction and taking care of it. And when you're beyond that age, you know, now men who are even, you know, much older are looking for younger women. And it's just kind of a biological thing that I think happens because, you know, we're supposed to reproduce. That's what our, our thing is. But now that, you know, we're in a place now where we don't need to reproduce anymore. <laughs> we got enough people on the planet and women are, are so much wiser. There's so much more compassion as you age, you just learn so much and you're, you have so much to offer that, you know, this idea that after you reach 50 or 60 years old, that you're supposed to go sit in the corner and be quiet is such a waste of so much you know, ability, skill, knowledge that we can't allow that to happen for, for ourselves. And, you know, do, do we look like we did when we were 25? Of course we don't. But does that mean that we're any less beautiful, that we look any, any less? No, right. it, you know, things, it changes, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. So for me, I'm, you know, I'm not saying people shouldn't get plastic surgeon or get their, you know, their, the shots, whatever it is that makes you feel good and makes you feel great about yourself and the way that you look. But I just don't want us to have this ageist sort of attitude that if you get a wrinkle, oh my God, your life is over. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's not over. It's, right. it's fine. <laughs> right. Right. And 60 year old woman should not be trying to look like she's 25. You just end up looking ridiculous. So let's just be a really great version of whatever age you are and really live your life to the fullest. That's I love it. Cool. So Leslie, I, uh, 
I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot here because I've shared that I was interviewing you today on my podcast with a few of my friends and I will be honest. Well, I'm always honest, but I was shocked that <laughs> some of my dearest friends said, Oh, I would love to understand how to put on makeup. I think I know how. And I have two of my girlfriends that don't even wear makeup. And they said, at least I haven't seen them wear it, but I guess they go to a wedding, right? So what I would love to do, if you are up for the challenge, because I oh, don't I... want you to say no, <laughs> but I would love to have you come back and maybe even do like a series of how do we apply? I mean, I learned, how do we apply makeup? What is the philosophy? I learned so much from you that it was amazing to me. And I'll be honest with you. I wanted to just really visually watch. And the next time I want to take notes. So I want to really get this where we can share it with people because um, I just think it's, it's really a big deal. It was to me, I almost felt, a little bit better that I wasn't the only one that felt this way. I was like, whoop. Because your friend, you know what, yeah. Michelle, it, it kind of, you know, it, it sort of blows my my mind. And I, I, you know, think about this when it happens, like what you're saying is like, here you are. I mean, you're highly intelligent, super exposed to everything, had a great, you know, you've always had a great career. You've worked all over at the highest levels. And it's not like you couldn't figure it out, but yet it was it was challenging to you because to me and i'm sure there are a lot of things that you're really really good at that you can't you're like really you didn't know how to do that or you didn't so you know i love to share the information you know the technique the i guess tips and tricks or secrets or whatever you call it because yeah i just think it, it's I, like you said, I think, I guess it's what my purpose is. It's sort of my, my gift. And I'm super happy to, if it makes people, women feel better and feel better about um, how, because, you know, let's face it, like, we don't want to be overly, you know, concerned with everything being about the way that we look, but when you feel like you look great, you just feel better and you present yourself well. And, you know, you're well, I definitely want to make sure that I feel the best I can be because I walk better, I talk better, I serve others better. So I have not gotten my product yet. And I will be ridiculously honest when it shows up with our audience, if that's okay with you, because yes. uh, the features and benefits that I've seen but haven't felt, I'm going to give my opinion. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't wait. Yeah. Cause I want, right. and then, you know, we should, we can do a, um, however you want to set this up. I'm all there. I'm there for you and for your audience to experience it in the best way that you think we can. Um, whether we do a series or, you know, I can come on and do like I did with you where I put it on, we could put it on together, you know, whatever you, um, whatever you think is going to be the most effective and that everyone will get the most out of. Well, I truly believe the way that you showed me with yourself was extraordinary because your natural beauty is radiant. And when you had one eye and then the other, and I, I, that just was, it just told a beautiful story and it got me so excited. It also made me think I can do this. And I have a mentor now, like, right? If I have a question, I can ask Leslie, that's a big deal. Because I mentor lots of people, like you say, in other areas. And it's not like I haven't tried to find somebody to help me with this. I just haven't found the right you and the right product. That's that's interesting. I mean, I may often find, I mean, I see it. I see, you know, and I hear it too from women who who, you know, go into the counter and they're just not happy with what the result is. So I'm all, I'm interested to, to I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to, to do it. And I, I, the more I do, the more I learn. Great, great. And just so the audience, my audience knows, I mean, she's sending me this stuff. It's online. So I can send it to be sent to me. It's super convenient. And we have Leslie. So Leslie, I just can't thank you enough. First of all, your career, your passion. I'd love to get more into about your horses um, as we're chatting. I mean, you just light up when you talk about the horses. Oh, so cool. um, let's plan to have you come back when I have my makeup. But I do believe that the key is you showing us 
exactly what you did with me. And um, let's do that. Like we'll get our schedules together and we go offline and we'll get that set up and I'll get that out to the audience. And I can't thank you enough. Is there anything that you would like to share? You know, kind of a tip. Uh, and I want to preface that the women that I talked to this weekend, uh, most of them were in their 30s. Hmm. Yes. 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 I, you know, I have always have this, uh, this idea in my mind, I guess that, um, you know, so at 63, I grew up and I was in college, you know, in the late, very late seventies, early eighties was when I was in college. And it was sort of the beginning of, you know, there was, there was the punk rock thing and the new age thing. And, you know, all of that, that I was going to all these clubs in Minneapolis and, you know, going out and we wore a lot of makeup. It was really fun and very creative and, you know, then the generation that followed, I feel like, you know, it was much more the sort of natural, no makeup, makeup look like all the cool girls in New York where, you know, Bobby Brown esque, where everything was very natural and neutral and blown out. And that group sort of never really learned to, or never played with a lot of makeup, you know, just creative, having fun with it. And now this younger group, you know, the teenage girls now and the girls in their 20s, they're also into the YouTube tutorials and the Instagram and all of the, the things yeah. that they, that are really, again, a lot of makeup and really having some having fun with it again, um, which you kind of have to be careful with a little bit of that because some of those girls go way over the top and they're putting like 15 layers of complexion product on. And, you know, it's great to play with and maybe it's fun for a video, but real life is, that's not realistic. I mean, you want to have five things that you love that you put on in five minutes and you're out the door that last all day that you don't have to think about again. Nobody's going to sit in front of the mirror for 30 minutes and putting their makeup on every day. Or You know, it's funny when you say when you asked me that question, Michelle, how long, how much time will you give this? And I was like, Ugh. so I thought, all right, I'll, I'll give myself 10 minutes. And you said, that's great. That's plenty. And I was like, oh, thank God. Because when you <laughs> just said five, I'm like, oh, that's even better. And I know that, you know, all the things about time, and it, but it's like, it should, just shouldn't be that hard, but it has to look that good. Yeah. And yet, you know, the other thing with that too, Michelle, is also, you know, and the reason that I ask about time is, is how do you really want the makeup to look? You know, do you want it to look like you, when you look at your skin, to look at the texture where you can see makeup and you know what I'm talking about. You'll see Absolutely. women who, you know, they have a whole routine where there's, you know, a concealer, a foundation, a powder, a, you know, a, a, all this kind of stuff. And when you look at them, you can see it on their skin. And if they're happy with that, great. It's really not my personal approach to how you want to look. I think you still want to look like fresh and, you know, that you can see the quality of your skin and the texture of your skin, because that is who you really are. Um, but um, I forgot my, I had, I had a point there, but I, I didn't know what it was. Anyway, I just had, you know, have this approach where you should be able to, you know, for every day like this, I can put this on in, in less than five minutes. Well, I love when you told me, because here's something that always kind of restricted me from makeup. Well, I have to carry the makeup bag with me and refresh it during the day. And yeah. so you said, no, it's got to last the entire day. I mean, you made a point about athletes when they're getting filmed that they had to look fresh, but not look like they had on makeup. Yeah. And um, I am an athlete. And I was like, whoa, I mean, you know, there's a lot of depth to the things that you're saying, the benefit of, you know, feeling beautiful without having to spend all day re-beautifying is, is exciting, I think, to a lot of us. Very yeah. exciting. It's really, um, it's, I, I'm really kind of approaching it as to what most women's real lives are really like, which is that we're really time starved for the most part. I mean, yeah, so much to do and not enough time However, it seems like to get it all done that you really want to do. Right. So, you know, we suffer. You, We're the last ones on the list. Right. So can you do this in five minutes and have it really last throughout the day? Maybe you have to touch up your lips or something like that. Yeah. But for the most part, it's really meant for performance. And, you know, when you're talking about the athletes, so 
it was sort of like, um, you know, Venus and Serena Williams were um, out clients of mine for a really long time. And I remember when we were formulating our Beauty for Reels mascara, I was working on a on a commercial for, with Venus. And I think it was it was like a laundry detergent or some kind of random thing like Tide detergent. And she had to hit the ball over and over and over like a hundred takes. And each time when they would, you know, they'd serve it to her and she'd hit it, it was supposed to be like this explosion of like, she was sweating and it was, you know, cause I think it was like, Oh, your clothes smell here, use Tide. It's going to take whatever, you know? <laughs> and so we we're out on the tennis court and I was just had gotten our mascara formulation from the lab and you know, I was like, okay, I'm, I mean, it's supposed to be water resistant. I'm going to try it, you know, and there are like a hundred people, all these lights, all these guys, you know, waiting. And each time she'd hit it, I'd have to spray her again, you know, so that the next time she hit it, that there'd be this. And I was like, oh shit, this stuff better work. Or I am so <laughs> rude, <laughs> but it did. Yay. And awesome. that became, you know, the formula that we use is like, this is tried and true. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that's it. The performance is a really big key and also really nice ingredients, really great things that are skin loving ingredients, trying to eliminate anything that is, you know, potentially harmful to the skin, the parabens, the preservatives that, you know, are potentially carcinogenic are gone. We're um, working on having everything vegan. Most everything is now we've still got a little bit of beeswax, which is not uh, vegan, but we're, you know, as we go through you know, 10 years ago, it was much harder with the ingredients to really formulate things that were high performance that were also really full of like plant-based and things like that. But now as time has gone on and we're discovering things all the time, there are new things coming into the marketplace that we can use. It's much easier. And so you can eliminate. So as we're reformulating, you know, vegan is important to me. I'm an animal lover. So, you know, cruelty-free for sure. Um, and that's a lot of things that are starting to come to the forefront. I think, you know, that as the the clean part of the product, the things that are beneficial to the skin is becoming more and more important, which of course is, you know, a, a good thing. Um, what else can I tell you? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be honest. Well, like I said, you know, I can't stand when people say this, like, what are you, dishonest most of the time? I was shocked when when we said, okay, I want, I want it all, put it together. And, you know, if you go again to the counter at Nordstrom's, you know, I mean, I've had my face done and when they added it up, you know, it's a large amount of money and I didn't like what I saw. Yeah. And I was bold enough to say, no, thank you. Good for you. Um, and I was amazed at, I mean, this is not a thousand dollars to design my face. I, I was amazed by that, honestly, Leslie. And, the other thing I want to just ask you for my audience, for our audience here is you don't change the way you apply the makeup at different ages. Is that a correct comment? Um, I think that when, when you're younger and you know, you, you, your skin doesn't have texture. Um, and as we age, you know, things start to go south a little, a little yeah. bit. Like in, you know, in, in the a placement of the eye makeup, you have to be, you know, very conscious of always wanting to lift the eye up and out now yes. that when you were younger, maybe you didn't have to, um, as we age, our upper lip line starts to fade and sort of dissolve a little bit. So that's something that, you know, becomes a little bit more important. Um, the eyebrows start to fade. The color is often graying or thinning. So eyebrows are, you know, something to focus. I think you 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 can shift your focus a little bit to to um, specific techniques that maybe you didn't have to focus on so much when you were younger. Makes but sense. it's not like you don't use as much or you use more. Or, and another thing that happens is that you know, not to you because you've got incredible color in your skin, you know, but as we age, we start to lose a lot of the color in our face. So sometimes you want to put, you know, a little bit brighter blush on, you know, maybe than you did things like just little things like that. But um, it doesn't, you know, change that that much. And the product itself, while you're, when you're younger, you can wear a lot more powder-based product because your skin is not, as we age, the skin dries a little bit. 
yeah. potentially can be a little bit more dehydrated and you want to have creams. So there are, there are a few things that are definitely um, considerations. Great. Great. So we'll get, Oh, I'm so excited about, um, I'm just so excited about you, Leslie. Thank you. You thank know what? You. The, and, the feeling is mutual. Right back at you, girl. <laughs> thank you. And for our audience and our viewers, please send in your questions. Yeah. Um, go ahead and you can put it in the soap notes. You can also, as you all know, you know, Mornings with Michelle, you can get a hold of me anytime, anywhere. Leslie, if they want to check you out and check out the beauty for you makeup, tell us how they can do that. How do they find you? So I think, that, well, I... The easiest thing is to go to beautyforreal.com, which is the website. It's just beauty and then F-O-R-R-E-A-L.com. But I'm also, I've got a TikTok with my name on it, which is Leslie Munsell, which I guess you could have there. Um, Will you explain the one TikTok that went like millions? Can you go through the <laughs> It was crazy because, you know, we've been doing social media forever because if you're in business, you have to, right? And it's, you know, and it can be fun, and but it it is just one of those things. And then a girl who help, was helping me with marketing, uh, online marketing, she, she said, you need to go on to TikTok yourself, not as the brand, but as yourself and do tips and tricks. And, uh, and I was like, okay, you know, why not? So I had a friend who had done it, you know, have had some experience with it. Cause I never even, you know, looked at TikTok. I didn't even know what it was. So it was, this was like maybe 11 or so months ago. And he's like, go oh, come over to my house, you know, bring your makeup, bring a couple of changes of clothing and we'll do some videos. Great. So the one that went absolutely bonkers was maybe the fifth one that we posted and which I got, that's what I love about TikTok. You, you know, for those of you guys who are in your audience, Michelle, that, you know, have experiences with social media. So Facebook and Instagram specifically is like, if you don't have a big following, you're probably not ever going to have anything that really goes viral or has a lot of attention, just, just sort of the way that algorithms work. Well, with TikTok, I mean, literally it was the fifth, I think the fifth video, but one of the first, let's say seven. Um, where I did a thing where I didn't have any lip color on. And basically it was almost like the same color that I'm having now. And I said, you know, lining, <laughs> this is the exact comment, lining your lips like a Kardashian is okay if you're under 30. But those of us who are 40, 50, and in my case, over 60, you know, you need to do it a little bit more, I think I said realistically. And so then I lined my lips and I put like this nudish sort of gloss over it. And that was it. Two and a half million views. <laughs> That's my dog barking. Yeah, I was like, it was so surprising and so amazing. And you know, the nice things that they had to say were astounding. And really the you know, the overall sort of overall um, comments that came in were like, it's so great to see someone who is addressing women other than, you know, 20 year olds and 30 year olds, because in most traditional beauty marketing, it's always been, you find a woman who is aspirational. She's not even a woman. She's a girl because she's probably under 20. She's got perfect features. Her skin is amazing you know, everything is great and you put some makeup on her and, you know, this is what we're all supposed to want to look like, which, you know, it is aspirational. It's great. I get it. Okay. But it's not realistic. It's, and it, and what is that supposed to make those of us who are, are, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 feel like when you look in the mirror and you don't look like that because you're not going to look like that. That's right. So, um, Yeah. So that was really, that was kind of, an amazing sort of affirmation, if you will, that what I'm talking about is going to resonate with, with women because, you know, they, the comments were really like, oh my gosh, it's so great to see someone who's not, you know, 20 years old talking to us about how to look great. I love it. I love it. Leslie, you are just a gift. You are a gift to us women. And I can't thank you enough for sharing your tips and making your product um and ladies check it out and we're gonna have you come back hopefully sooner rather than later like 
maybe next week, maybe. Whenever you, I, I'm, I'm, I love doing this. And so I, uh, you just let me know, Michelle, I'll be there and any questions. Yeah. I think it's great. It, you know, we can figure out how to, how to get them from you to me, but I would love to have input as to what it is that people would like to see and talk about. Right. So if you're listening to this podcast and you have questions, send us a DM and we will get those answered for you. And, and who knows, you know, collaboration, you know, like I said, I met Leslie through a collaboration and um, just who knows where we go from here. We've got the best here. We've got a heart of gold, a beautiful woman who wants to beautify all of us women. And we just couldn't be more grateful for you. Leslie, you inspire dreams. Thank you. Thank you so much. I loved being here with you. Thank you. Thank you.